Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can use Hotel and T-Square to get even more information out of our PCA scores plots. This is the fourth video in our Python for Forensic Chemistry video tutorial series, where the emphasis is really around how we can build more rigor into our analysis. And so this has taken us to understand the metadata better and develop some new features from that data. And in the last video, we layered these new features on top of our PCA scores plot produced from part two. Now what we want to do is you look at the hotel and T-squared, which is generally a multivariate T-test. It allows us to look at various groups and compare them. We can see in this multidimensional space how well those groups are clustered together. However, because of this, there are some additional calculations that are needed similar to PCA, such that we have to compute the eigenvalues and covariance of these data. The most important part is the intuition around this. And so let me give you some intuition around what's happening when we compute a hotel in T-squared from something like a PCA scores plot. If we look at our sample scores plot I have illustrated here, and we have three clusters, maybe this is cluster one in gold, cluster two in blue, and cluster three that is red. And we actually wanna understand how tightly these are clustered or what is the approximate range. Normally people might just draw some visual line like this. However, the hotel and T-squared actually allows us to compute statistics that we can now then plot a 95% confidence interval around this group. And so by doing that, we will produce some confidence ellipse in which we can reasonably assert that most of our data will be confined within this group here. Now, not surprisingly, it may not capture everything, but it does give us a pretty good idea of the range of reasonable values for each of these groups. And so in the initial part of this video, we'll focus on one group. And by the end of this video, we can actually produce a confidence loop for all of our groups, such that we can now be reasonably sure of how different these groups are. So in the video before, we started off with a scores plot that looked like this, where we knew we had some underlying structure in the data. By the time we had analyzed all of the metadata and generated a new variable, we were able to produce a plot that looked like this. And from this, we can see there's a number of various groups within the data set. And so this blue group here is caffeine being doped into cocaine. And we have other impurities as well, such as lidocaine, inositol, procaine, phytocetin, et cetera. And so now in this video, we want to try to see if we can define some confidence ellipse around these various groups, just so we can build a better understanding of the structure and how much these might vary. And so this is not something that's limited to forensic chemistry, but this additional rigor around how we process this scores data can help us to build a more confident case in the future. And so let's move forward. To do this, we need one additional function. This is from the uh, matplotlib.patches. We need ellipse. And what this will do is allow us to build the actual ellipse structure. If we look at the doc string, we can see that this allows us to pass in coordinates for the center with and height of the ellipse. So that's why we're importing that. Otherwise, we had everything else we need with matplotlib, pyplot, uh, pandas, etc. And in this video, because the code is somewhat more complex, I have already pre-written it. Normally I improvise this a little bit more, but for conciseness, I've already written it out and we'll just talk through line by line. So to illustrate what we are going to be doing, I'm reminding you of the data set we have produced so far. In the beginning, we just had our scores data. And by the last video, we have now incorporated a lot of metadata, plus a few new features called impurity and weight percent. And so in the next cell, this is where we actually build that confidence ellipse. It will, we need to compute the mean of our group. We also need to compute the covariance. This again is similar to what's done in PCA. And then a few extra parameters to allow us to plot this data. In the top part of this function, we're going to use the linear algebra method to compute our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We'll then sort those values in reverse, and then we will store those in these lists here. Next, we will compute the angle of rotation of our confidence ellipse, and this is going to be based on the vector and leverage the numpy.degrees method for this process. And so we'll use the eigenvalues in this calculation to return those two parameters, and then we will use that ellipse method we imported to actually build the ellipse 
and then draw it. So henceforth, we'll just use this function. We don't need to review this. This is a great one. You might just want to screenshot and adapt. And over the course of the next few cells, I'll show you how we can implement it. So in the cell here, we begin by computing those mean values. That was what we needed for this function, mean and covariance. And so to do that, we will use the np.mean method to compute the mean of our PC0 and PC1. Then we will compute the covariance of those scores values using the np.covariance method and set the row var equal to false. Next, we will plot the confidence ellipse. So now we've got a series of lines to help build our plot. And here we're going to look, we're looking at all of the data. And so we will generate a subplot that gives us this axis figure. We will plot PC0 versus PC1. We'll set the size of the points to five. And then we'll use this confidence ellipse method that we have produced up here and pass in our mean scores generated from there, our covariance, our axis, and then set the edge color to red. And then we will just set up the plot using these other parameters. When we do this, you see we have our red confidence ellipse here. So this data is showing us our 95% confidence ellipse. And not surprisingly, because of the shape of the data, while it is capturing most of the data, there are a few points that are pretty far out. Now, these points corresponded to our caffeine here and then the inositol mannitol samples out here. However, it is capturing most of that dense core of data, however, it kind of missing some of the structure. And so let's now refine this a little bit more such that we don't compute a confidence ellipse of the entire data, but rather we can focus on distinct groups. So we're going to modify the code a little bit. So instead of computing the mean value for all of the data, as we did before, you know, if you remove this query statement here, we're not going to use a query statement to query where impurity equals caffeine. And we're going to pass this query statement at Q to this method. And then again, we want to compute the mean for PCA zero and PCA one and the covariance likewise. So everything else stays the same. Next, we will generate our subplots like we did before. We'll set the white grid and we will then make our scatter plot. I'm switching in this case to Seaborn because the plot looks much better and I want to pass in this hue parameter a little bit easier. Next, we will plot our confidence ellipse. I've changed the edge color to blue just to match the color of our caffeine samples from the original plots. And again, we set up the labels accordingly. If you run the cell, we now have our confidence ellipse for the caffeine. And so now this is the 95% confidence ellipse for just the caffeine group. And intuitively, you can imagine how we can now extend this to other groups. And so now let's say we want to focus on our cocaine, just our pure cocaine samples. So let's change our query statement to cocaine. If you run that, you see that all of our pure cocaine samples are tightly clustered towards the bottom of this group here. And we see how small our confidence ellipse gets with that tight clustering of these samples. So we can modify this query statement to affect which group we're building our confidence ellipse around, but we can also extend this to generate multiple confidence ellipses. And so let's do that. Now I've got a case where I have three query statements where impurity equals caffeine, impurity equals procaine, and impurity equals inositol. And so I'm now focusing on groups that are a little bit more spread apart so that we can see these ellipses pretty clearly, but we could separate this out in many other ways. Recall we have other variables such as weight percent, we have salt form, we have components. So there's other things we could use, but in this case, we're gonna focus on these so let's run that and now because of that we're we're going to have three separate parameters for our mean scores for group one our mean score for group two and our mean of scores for group three and so lastly we will pass those mean scores into this plot confidence ellipse function and so i have now updated the edge color to match the group color and then everything else stays the same. So the way this function is built is actually fairly easy to modify and nothing else around the figure changes. So when we run this, we now have our caffeine samples in blue. We have our inositol in this pink ellipse to the right. And then down here at the bottom, we have our procaine samples tightly clustered by. 
And so with this, we have a way to generate our more confidence around how distinct these groups are versus just eyeballing our clusters, as you see in many cases. And so even if you're not using this in a forensics case, if you do want to illustrate your clusters and then show how confident you are in their ranges, this is a great way to visualize this. I could not find a direct solution, so I kind of had to build my own by looking at some of the documentation, and it appears to work reasonably well. If you have updates, feel free to let me know. But in any case, this is a way to generate these clusters with more confidence. So this is a good tool to use in your toolkit. If you would like me to upload this notebook to GitHub, let me know in the comments. In any case, I see you in the next video. Peace.